We're here at the SISM World Military Wrestling Championships. Matt side with Randy Couture, one of the special guests for the competition. Uh, Randy, um, you were an Army guy. That's where you got your career going. Um, talk about being here on another Army base and uh, having an opportunity to meet and see a lot of your old friends and just the background of your wrestling career with the Army. Well, it's actually on this base in Fort Dix in 1985 that I got my first chance to try out for the All-Army Wrestling Team. I was successful in that and, and made the team, which led to qualifying for the Olympic Trials as a soldier. And, and kind of started me down the road of, of being a, a, one of our national wrestlers to represent the United States in many, many tournaments. So, and that ultimately led to college and, and uh, MMA and all the other stuff that I've, that I've managed to accomplish. So it's really kind of nostalgic for me to be back here with my old coach, Coach Floyd Winter, who's running the sports programs here and, and organized the SISM games for this year. Uh, it was 1988 when I wrestled in Palermo, Sicily at the SISM Games and won a world championship at 180 and a half pounds. 180 and a so, half. So, yeah. I mean, you don't only have a background with the Army and with this base, but with this tournament, right? Absolutely, I mean, yeah. So, uh, talk about the pride you felt winning a medal as a member of the U.S. SISM team. Obviously, we've got a lot of Americans uh, here this week, some of them at their first SISM championship. What kind of pride was it to represent your military and your country? Well, it was really uh, the first opportunity for me to, to get a taste of and to start to believe that I could compete at that level at a high level internationally. There are 24 countries here at this tournament today, uh, this weekend, both men's and women's freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling. So uh, it's always a very, very well-attended uh, event. It's, it's uh, friendship through sports for all the military teams from all these countries. And there are world medal placers and, and you know, very, very high level competition. So uh, it was important for me, I think, to and in my progress as, a, as an athlete to, to develop that confidence and the courage to go out and compete against guys from other countries at that level. And, and that was the start of it for me. And to this day, that trip to Palermo, Sicily in 1988 is one of the best wrestling trips I've ever been on. Not just because our team did well, we won the title, and I won the title, but uh, historically we, we uh, landed in Rome on our way to Palermo and we just found out that we had shot down the Iranian jetliner. Oh wow, uh, that Iranians, was so a, a historic moment yeah, in absolutely. the military. The, the right? Iranians and the Iraqis were supposed to be at the SISMs in Palermo. There was some talk about turning us around and sending us back home for fear for our safety, for retaliation uh, from, from that incident. As it was, we, we voted and we all said, no, we come this far, we're going to go wrestle. Uh, the, the Iraqis and Iranians did show up finally for the greco roman competition and missed the per first part of the tournament for the freestyle. But we drove to and from the event in armored cars. It was a rather unique experience, a uh, beautiful place in Palermo and still one of the best trips I've ever been on. So um, you obviously have had a lot of chances uh, since you finished wrestling going into MMA and now as an actor to talk about your love for wrestling and uh, when you get invited back to something like this uh, I mean how does it feel to know that this is where your roots are and all your other career activities? Well it's, it's very very important to me I, I, I get to now go to the NCAA championships and see some of my old college buddies and teammates and my coach is still coaching at Oklahoma State now to get to come here to SISMs and see a bunch of the guys that, that I wrestle with on the All-Army team and to know that Floyd is retiring this year in December so to kind of come pay homage to him and, and support him in, in, in his last kind of big hurrah with the SISM Military World Championships here. Uh, it's, it's like old home week. It's, it's amazing. It's great to see a lot of old familiar faces and, and to be on this, in this setting. Look, you went into MMA and you were able to be a champion um, at the highest level in, in that sport. We talked about it before but you know when you get back around wrestling it must obviously remind you of some of the things that were fundamental for you as a, as a fighter that came out of wrestling. Talk about the toughness and just the technical abilities and the mental abilities that a wrestler has when, when they go into the mixed martial arts. Well, I think wrestling is, is, uh, has become a proving ground and a character builder for a lot of folks. It started in junior high school for me all the way through high school. Some of uh, the most significant people in my life were my wrestling coaches. They, they were the, those male figures that I looked up to that, that cracked the whip, that made me work, that taught me discipline, 
and uh, a lot of those things that carried over through the Army with Floyd, that carried over into college at Oklahoma State with, with Coach Say, Coach Burnett, Coach Smith, uh, and I think it's that mindset that mentality that, that transferred over to, to mixed martial arts. Uh, and I think now mixed martial arts has become the professional outlet for a lot of collegiate and Olympic wrestlers. And it's an outlet that we didn't really have before unless you were willing to kind of go into the, the, the pro wrestling scene, which isn't really for a lot of amateur wrestlers. So, especially the smaller guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think uh, wrestling is the oldest and greatest combative sport there is for a reason. That a lot of the technique and, and mindset and mentality that you foster and develop in wrestling translates to any of the individual combative sports like mixed martial arts. And, and I think we're seeing a lot of the top guys in the sport of MMA come from wrestling backgrounds now. You're an actor, Randy. <laughs> Did wrestling help you to all learn how to act? I mean, Surprisingly, there's a lot of crossover from, from, from wrestling and fighting to acting. Uh, you know, you're on a set for three, sometimes four months at a time, 12, 13 hour days. There's a mi mental and physical grind to, to that endeavor. Being in a foreign country or in a hotel, showing up prepared, diligent, being coachable, listening, knowing your surroundings. Uh, those are all skills, I think, that come from wrestling, for sure. Uh, and I think that carry over and serve me well in, in acting as I've learned and figured out how to play a character and, and grind out a movie for, for an extended period of time. And it is a grind, isn't it? it absolutely It's not is. glamorous at that point, is Most it? people think it's glamorous. There's not a whole lot of glamour involved. The real glamour comes when the product is finished and you get to walk a red carpet and go to a premiere and see the finished product see the fruits of your labor and that's obviously the fun part and that's a lot like walking out on this mat after a long training camp and getting ready for a championship or going to a training camp and walking out there on fight night and doing your job and doing what you're trained to do so in, in that sense it's very similar now all your fans within wrestling and in the united states have been watching uh, dancing with the stars talk about that opportunity how much fun it was and i heard you lost a little weight it was a good workout too. actually it was a great workout i spent about the last five weeks training five or six hours a day with my partner Karina Smirnoff to uh, to get ready for these dances and you don't really know until you get your your song you know you have to get songs approved and then they give you a cut of that song just a minute of that song to put choreography into and learn that dance and so for the first couple weeks we were just training going to the dance floor learning all these different varieties of ballroom style dancing and then once we got our cut then we could choreography uh, Karina is a very very talented young lady. She created all the choreography for all three of the dances that we did. Uh, we went out there the first the first week and did the fox trot and everybody's like, oh my gosh, there's this big guy who can actually move gracefully and, and fluidly on the dance floor and it was a very romantic song and a romantic dance and people kind of freaked out about it because there's this big knob-eared wrestler that, that, that was sure. kind of acting that way and, and, and moving that way. So I think it was a chance for me to show a little softer side of myself. My mom, my sisters, my children know that side of me but outside of that most people know me for getting in, in a cage and, and punching somebody in the face. So right, right. it's a little bit different. Uh, some of you that have been around me for a long time know, know that other side of me a little more. Um, you know, it's an interesting show. At the end of the day, it's still a reality TV show. And uh, it's all about ratings for them. So I think they, they, they have a plan for the season and how they think and who they think are going to get the best ratings for the show. And I think someone made up their mind after the, the, the third week that that probably wasn't going to get those ratings and there were other people that, that were going to get those ratings better. And they, they forced me into a position to go first again uh, for the second week in a row, which is a tough spot with the judges, and the sure. judges kind of hammered me. But you know what? I did my part. I went out. I uh, I trained hard. I executed the dances when the, when the lights came on, and, and I felt good about it, and I had a lot of fun. Well, you know, you're not afraid of being on the spotlight. I mean, think about it. You've wrestled in World Wrestling Championships. You've fought in the UFC Finals for a gold, for the world title. You've been involved in some really important, serious, stressful situations. Was it fun out there, knowing this was an a live situation? It was you... a lot of fun, and, and in a lot of ways, it felt like a big match or a big fight. Yeah. You know, we, we trained very, very hard to get the routine down and have it nailed and then 
stay calm, smile, focus, and walk out there and do what you're trained to do. That is absolutely walking out on this wrestling mat or walking up in that cage for a fight. So, again, some similarities there that I didn't expect to find in a dancing show. Now, uh, you served in the military. You're a veteran. I mean, not very many people can say, hey, I served. And, and then to be here in, uh, at the sporting event from the sport that you were part of the military, just talk about your pride of, of being able to say that you served and that you still represent the Army in your life. Well, I think uh, obviously something I'm very proud of is the six years that I spent in the United States Army. And fortunately for me in the 80s, there wasn't a whole lot going on. There was a Cold War. All these soldiers that are here competing in this championship now are, are you know, representing their countries and their flags and their militaries. And uh, some, of those, some of those militaries are in pretty tough spots, tough countries where there's a lot of things going on. There are a lot of our soldiers that are coming back with missing limbs and suffering from traumatic brain injury and PTSD and, and uh, need our support, need our help. And we've got a, a big charity event coming up this, this Thursday on the 9th uh, at my gym in Las Vegas. Marcus Luttrell and I are doing a, a push-up challenge, really? kind of like a walkathon, and you do push-ups, and the one who you know, raises the, does the most push-ups, and we, we're donating money based on those push-ups to to the boot campaign uh, to support our veterans that are coming back and need need assistance. So uh, I've been involved in that for seven or eight years now with the Extreme Couture GI Foundation, and trying to get back to some of those guys that are fighting for our freedoms and putting our, our way of life out there and, and, and representing us so well abroad and uh, so I'm, I'm proud to have worn the uniform and I'm proud now to be able to support those guys that are putting it on the line for us. Does it surprise from people when you say hey I served I mean uh, you became famous not when you were in the army even within wrestling that was the beginning of your career um, and, and what kind of reaction do people have to you and and to some of your friends when you share the information that you were part of our military? Well I think Fortunately, the, the climate now for, for our service members is, is very positive and people I think are thankful for the things that they do and the sacrifices that they make both with their families, leaving their families for extended periods of time and going to hot spots like Afghanistan and, and Iraq and the other places that, that they have to go. And, and uh, unlike previous generations where, where the service members weren't treated very well when they come home, now I'm fortunate and thankful that a lot of those guys are treated very, very well and a lot of people don't know that I served. And, and, and so, you know, they're surprised and they want to thank me for my service. And, and as proud as I am of that, I, I don't feel like it's the same thing. I never had to put my life on the line for what I believed on in for this country. And there's a lot of guys now that are doing that. So I think they're the, they're the real heroes. Uh, you know, I've just been fortunate and gotten able to compete at a very high level in a couple of sports. And that's gave me some celebrity and notoriety that way. But, uh, you know, the, the, the truth is I never really had to put it on the line like those guys do. Now, hey, next year, September, we're coming to your town in Vegas where you've got your gym and bringing the world championships. Uh, are you looking forward to, like, helping us promote the heck out of that and let Absolutely. the world know that Absolutely. the world's best wrestlers are coming to Vegas next September? I, I think Vegas is going to be a buzz for sure with, with having all three styles compete uh, for world medals and, and, and the world come to Las Vegas for the sport of wrestling. And I'll be very excited. I know all the guys at my gym are excited. Many of them have not been exposed to wrestling at that high level. So, uh, you know, they've seen videos that I've shown and, and been around me, but that's been the extent of their exposure to it. So I think there's a lot of grapplers, a lot of folks from the martial arts and mixed martial arts area and, and genre of sport that, that are anxious to see that. And we got started right off with Greco, and you're a Greco guy, so. That's right. Know, but we're going to make sure that people know that Randy Couture is in town during the Greco <laughs> tournament, right? I mean, get I'm us off to a good it. start, right? Absolutely. I know our, our buddy Matt Lindland is running the Greco team for the U.S. now. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of work to do there to get get some of the top level athletes up to speed and, and hopefully we'll get some guys in the in the program that, that can buy for medals and win medals here in our own our own country in Las Vegas next year. Well Randy, we appreciate your time. We always enjoy visiting with you. The best part about you is that you are a wrestler and there's wrestling around and we're gonna have you here, you know, I know how busy you are. But to take the time to be with us here this weekend is fantastic and I know we'll see you down the road often. Thanks.